Hello everybody and welcome to another Nod of Vlog. I'm back in Plattsburgh and uh, I'm back to holding this thing like this because I can't wait to get home to record this. Um, I've been listening to some Utah stuff. I, you're going to hear me do a video on Utah soon enough. Uh, look up Transparent LG, it's really nice. Um, and I was also, uh, a bunch of videos came out from this channel called the AAAI uh, com Institution or something. But the people who made that Mario AI thing a few years back, they just released a few new videos about that and several other things. So my mind kind of wandered, I thought about how, yeah, I thought about some AI stuff and some audio stuff. I had a plan that involved how I listen to music and a way you could do a brand new form of measuring audio in audio editing. See, when I listen to music walking through the streets here, walking to and from Hawkins, sometimes I'll visualize it with my hands, you know, um, like transparent algae sometimes would be like, uh, it's weird to film this, but it's like, basically I just move my hand around stuff and do different motions with my fingers and things. And the point is that it's a 3D space that you're visualizing the music in. And it's not just one, it's not just this way, this way, and this way. It's a whole spherical movement. But it also is measured in intensity. Because this, you know, it's like how there are languages that are tonal. A tonal language, ba, can mean a completely different thing than ba. Even though they're the same exact sound, the intensity can be a completely different thing. So it's really a four or further dimensional representation of music. Because if I go like this, it can mean something completely different. It could be representing a different instrument than something that does this. So it kind of looks like an insane twitching on my hand or whatever. But I think that there really is some interesting parts of it. Imagine if, you know, we have in the, in the business, we measure audio in waveforms when we're visualizing them. You know, you've, see, you've all seen them. It's a horizontal line underneath the track, and it'll have these zzz 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 all the way through it. And that's how we've done it for a while, but what if there were a better way to do it? The waveform only gives two dimensions of information, but it's efficient because you can see a whole three minute song's waveform just like that. Now, what if you took that waveform and you turned it this way? So that in the editing booth, you could see kind of through to the end of it, like you're looking down a tube, but there was all this circular information. So not just the waveform going like this towards the end of the screen inside a little box, but also just spherical. And then you add different colors and shapes and intensities and you can add further dimensions to it. Now imagine you had a full screen, which was the audio, you know, of a track you had selected. And then over here you had wa your waveforms and stuff. Now say you, wanted, you knew that there was a clip in the audio somewhere. Traditionally you'd look for a giant spike in the waveform. But what if instead you could just grab in like a VR kind of audio editing and pull through the cylinder until you found a big shape of black. Now in he with uh, traditional audio editing you'd be able to tell where the spike was from and at the time, maybe you could go back and find out what caused it, but it's all compressed into this 2D space. It is all just up and down decibel information. But in this format, you could see, okay, in what part of the sphere is this located in? Is this black splotch? What texture is the splotch? What's its velocity? Which way is it going in the sphere? And that gives you so much more information. It can tell you what kind of frequency generated that splotch and what came from it, how much time it lasted, how much, you know, what it, how it affects all the other things. You can also have a composite layer over the spherical tube, you know, representation of time in, in the, it's like this. And you can kind of pull through it to get to the end of it. And you can also see, have like, um, several little dots representing gen general uh, standards and compressions of all this surplus of information. So you can track, you know, you know, the melody would be represented by a little ball and it'd move around and stuff through the time. You know? Say here's a sphere, and say the red dot is on this knuckle 
at t uh, at frame 31 on second 527. Then a few frames later, that the ball of the sphere as you pull through the dot could be on the other side of the fist, so the tonal of the memory could be a completely different spot on the sphere. There's so much information you can use to represent. There's so much stuff that you can represent so much information with. It's really interesting. So I don't know, maybe in a futuristic hologram world of VR editing, you know, we could have so much more complicated and uh, complicated music. And when you have music like, you know, Kizunami's piss core, or I guess D flow now, D flow's piss core, and go back to dubstep and go to crazy fucking new age, not new age, but like, if you go to music that's being produced nowadays, it has so much going on that I think it's impossible to edit on a waveform uh, suite without just having tracks and tracks and tracks and dozens of tracks of audio. What if you could uncompress and recompress it into this cylindrical, spherical format and pull through it on a full screen and just see all this stuff? You know, say you have just one tone, one 540 sine wave. It would be like through. Then you're introduced another sine wave, but produced on different, uh, produced on different something. You change something about it, but keep frequency the same. Then instead of it being, it would be, well, I mean, it's the same frequency, so it'd be over here. But it'd be a different part of it. And it could be a different color. It could be a different this. It could have a different texture to it. It could be a different part of the sphere. It could be going around the sphere. You know, once you get into three-dimensional representation, then four-dimensional representation, five-dimensional representation, 11-dimensional representation, you know, fourth dimension could be the fact that it's the intensity of the velocity of things, and then color, and then texture, and you keep going and going, you can represent so much data. I'm not talking about just, you know, those visualizations you get in Windows Media Player, because those things are white noise. Have you ever tried to analyze one of those things? It's completely random. It's, you take the song and all the frequencies of the song, and then it mushes it together with the standard format to produce a, a pretty visualization, but it's not actually represent. You can't actually get anything from the song with it. It's basically, almost all of them look always the same. The only thing the song does is sometimes change what colors appear when. Now imagine if you could have that visualization, that, you know, crazy, trippy, colorful effect, and actually understand it and be able to use it to edit audio. That's pretty trippy.